amusement park employees of Reddit. What is your horror story? I operated a few different roller coasters during my fun filled summers at this amusement park. But most of my horror stories come from one ride in particular. The train was one of the ones that you had to step into. With a lap bar restraint. On one particular day. It was over 100F and the ride had been running as usual for most of the morning. As we were loading the train, a guest came up to me to say that there was an awful smell coming from the front car, and my stomach immediately dropped. Usually with these types of complaints, we'd find that the previous rider had won too many slushies before riding and had lost their lunch. The gross. But we were used to cleaning that kind of stuff. I started approaching the front car and immediately called for my co-worker to direct everyone out of the train and back into the line, and to call our supervisor to close the ride. Instead of a normal puke situation, I found a greenish brown liquid spread all throughout the front car, from the seat down to the floor. Whoever was the last person to ride the ride had shat all over themselves and hadn't bothered to tell anyone about it. Cleaning human fesses is one thing, it's absolutely disgusting but it can be done. But trying to clean up human diarrhea in 100 plus degree weather, off of the floor of a car where you had to kneel down and stick your head into the car to reach the very front, is a situation that I never would have imagined even in my worst nightmares. The ride was down for the rest of the day, and it took over an hour to clean everything out of the car before we could start really sanitizing it. I would have just burned it. I was a caricature artist for Six Flags. And one day a dad and his son came up and wanted a drawing of the two of them. Now the way caricature pricing worked was we would charge per person in the drawing. The father and son wanted a simple black and white headshot of the two of them. And a black and white headshot was $10. So for the two of them it would be $20. Before tax. I very clearly explained this to them. Asking several times are you okay with the ending price. And they excitedly accepted. Fast forward to me ringing them up at the register, and I tell them the total, 24 something. The father's happy and friendly demeanor quickly dissipates, and he begins arguing with me about pricing. I calmly explain the situation with pricing and apologize if I wasn't clear enough, and gently remind him that he understood and agreed otherwise I wouldn't have done the drawing. Big mistake. He gets angrier and starts yelling at me, cursing me out for lying and overcharging them to put a few more coins in my pocket. He accuses me of preying on parents and their children, thinking I can take advantage of them because they're stupid suckers. He tries to take the drawing without paying, and when I hold it back and tell him he can't, he throws a $10 bill at me and snarls that that's all he's going to pay, that I'm worthless and my drawing isn't even good and doesn't deserve any more than that. I'm really upset at this point, and hand him the drawing wishing him a good day. Frick you he yells in response, the whole time his son is standing there, looking embarrassed and terrified. The dad proceeds to pace back and forth in front of my stand, alternating between coming back to the counter and yelling at me and chasing customers away, screaming at them about how I'm stealing money and how the stand is a huge frickin' ripoff. Thankfully his charade lasted all of 20 minutes and police finally got him out of there. Left me pretty shaken though, I had to take my break early and cried over my lunch. Should've torn the picture in two. I was working security at a theme park when I was 18. One evening one of the roller coasters that was stopped in the station got rear-ended by another. There were some injuries. Nothing severe thankfully. I did however end up staying up all night, after the park had closed, sitting on the coaster to ensure no looky lose or news media tried to get access to the cars. It was dark. Creepy. I was 18 in a closed, deserted amusement park. Oh it's not like crazy hobos are going to get you in the middle of the night. The raccoons on the other hand. A few years ago a smallish theme park in my state made some kind of mistake when chlorinating the wave pools and made a bunch of chlorine gas and 26 people had to be taken to the hospital. Holy frick. Chlorine ain't nothing to frick around with. One of my supervisors got fired for shooting up in the supplies closet then taking a golf cut and accidentally running over a child. He was rehired after he went to rehab and then tried to sell drugs to the staff every day. LOL. Accidentally running over a child. Lifeguarding at this lazy river tube pool. Basically just tell kids to get back in their tubes all day. These two guys like 30 years old are arguing in polish or something floating all around the lazy river. They are on lap 2 or 3 of arguing and really going at it. 
One of them pulls a knife out of his trunks and stabs the other guy's tube. He walked around to the end with his pop tube while guy with the knife proceeds to just hop all the different fences to get outside the park and is not seen again. Many moons ago I was an assistant director of training security at a park known for its cartoon mice. While doing the walk around the park with a group of new hires I got a call about a possible indecent exposure incident at Fantasyland. Knowing that was the most popular place for children in the park. So much more than Toontown. I rushed the new hires through the backstage area to cut travel time. While we were backstage behind the small world ride one of my trainees pointed out someone dropping their pants and leaning against the building. Before we had a chance to close the distance between us and the guy a blast of brownish yellow liquid exploded outwards in a fan pattern. I stopped the group, got on the radio and informed them of the bio incident then slowly made my way to the guy. When I was about 10 feet from him he looked up, smiled, then blasted the wall again. Without a word he pulled up his pants and started to walk away. His pants were soaked with liquid crap and pee. Before he was able to leave the area, Anaheim police apprehended him. After questioning him they called for an ambulance. Upon talking with the police sergeant, found out he was a well-known homeless man in neighboring city of Orange. Usually picked up for swinging his dong at traffic. The kicker though was... He wasn't the subject of the initial call. When we finally got to Fantasyland we found out that someone was complaining about a woman breastfeeding. Three and a half years of working there and that is one of the events that still feels fresh in my mind. Why in TF would someone complain about a woman breastfeeding? It's not like you can really see anything but side boob I guess. Nothing scary ever really happened at the rides I worked but the worst thing was telling people they were too large to ride. It was always pretty awkward and some people just didn't understand you could not ride the ride if you couldn't buckle the seat belt. This is what caused my husband and my best friend to lose weight. Both of them had a heartbreaking experience of being told that they couldn't ride any of the rides in a park because of their size. So Six Flags has a lot of really dumb rules for their employees which causes there to be a crazy high turnover rate. That, on top of the fact that on this particular day it happened to be the hottest day of the summer in New England meant that after having only worked there for two and a half weeks I was the most senior person in my department of Kidsopolis. This means I have to run the whole operations schedule for my department and tell everybody where to go and what to do all day. Keep in mind I don't even know half of these people's names. On top of that nobody knows how to operate the freaking zoom jets. So my supervisor grabs me first thing in the morning and tells me he's going to teach me how to operate this ride. Things are going alright when about halfway through this training my supervisor passes out. Because it's like 110 degrees. So now I'm supposed to be leading this department full of people I do not know. While operating a ride I do not know how to operate. And if I have any questions then I have no one to ask because my supervisor is unconscious somewhere. Meanwhile I'm getting calls and someone's like hey so Sally passed out in the splish splash zone and I'm just like who the frick is Sally. Julia's calling me and telling me she's feeling dehydrated and needs to go on break and I'm like listen I've got Julio trying to operate the crazy cups and the wacky wagons at the same time what makes you think we have enough staff to let you go on break? Fast forward to the end of the day. I've had 3 people faint because of the heat. I still don't know most of my co-workers names but I did get yelled at in Spanish over the phone a lot. And because I felt bad that nobody got enough time on break I told everyone they could go home and I'd sweep up the department on my own. I got pretty good at the zoom jets though. I got pretty good at the zoom jets though. Best part. I once had to hide check a girl who was both mentally and physically disabled. This is just as they're about to get on the ride too as someone else previously didn't bother to check her height to begin with. So I politely ask her and her carer to come and check her height after lots of no, 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 no s. And as luck would have it, she wasn't tall enough, of course. She didn't take it well and started screaming saying she's going to ride no matter what. And after leaving to let the carer tell her to get out, she finally left her seat after about 10 minutes which is an eternity in roller coaster time. I see her walking off. I mean, yeah it sucks but I'm just doing my job. I'm just relieved that she's finally going. But then as she's walking through the exit, she turns around and screams I hope you die. So that was nice. It was hilarious but still soul crushing at the same time. Also it was my birthday. I quit not long after. 
Imagine how bad you would feel if you let a mentally and physically disabled girl ride a roller coaster and she died because she was too small to ride it safely. That wouldn't be the best birthday present. Was working the first shift opening the park and doing dry runs with a roller coaster. Well, when it came back there was obvious impact on the front car. One of the groundskeepers had headphones and listening to music working through his shift. He died instantly. The following week was a nightmare and I still don't think to this day they have found all of him. A huge storm was coming. I was operating the railroad at the time. Unfortunately, we left the station right before they were able to call us to close the ride. So as we are on our way, suddenly there was a huge downpour. Upon arriving at the station, we were immediately directed to an employee shelter. Now this is where even more of the interesting stuff happened. 1. People were stranded at the station away from the entrance, wanting to ride back. I had specifically warned that the ride can close at any time before people board it. 2. We were told that we cannot suggest any shelter because that would make the park responsible. 3. A baby in a stroller was abandoned in the storm near the kid area. Worked for an amusement park several summers as a teenager, and a haunted house at one, off and on. Neither park I worked at was a dry park, so drunk parents ranked among the worst. The haunted house was particularly fun, as later groups tended to involve drunks. I took a bad kick to the ribs once, while working under an overhang, and we had at least one violent incident a night. For further perspective, most of us were high schoolers and not all that intimidating. For the actual amusement park, the most fricked up thing was when I got sent home early once for a bit of weather coming, which wasn't that odd. Said I should have time to get home, though, I lived a half hour away. What I didn't know was I got sent home in a tornado warning. The warning was posted when they sent me home. They knew the line of storms was about to hit. I ended up pulling over after a tree branch hit my car and got stuck in a hailstorm. The roof of my car was dented. No tornado actually touched down, but we had bad straight line winds. A few other employees were also told to go home and had pretty similar stories of trying to. The woman working the office that day just decided, on her own, we'd be better off going home than staying in the fairly solid, permanent buildings on the premises. AKA, once we were gone, not her problem. That's fricked. I worked on the dueling dragons at Universal Orlando when in college. For those who don't know, the dueling dragons were two separate coasters that dueled and had several near misses with each other. They were pretty unique at the time and were super fun. As you can imagine, Universal told people to empty their pockets before they rode so that their phones and crap wouldn't fly out and smack somebody on the other coaster at 60 miles per hour. Of course, May times people would ignore this because they're lazy and stupid. I was working one day when the ride shut down completely. Change had flown out of someone's pocket and hit a guy in the eye, leaving him blind in that eye. The tragic part. The guy was already blind in his other eye. Now the guy is 100% blind. They didn't duel anymore after that, and the ride was left permanently much lamer. I still feel for the poor blind guy, but the irony is comedic in a dark sort of way. Universal now makes you completely empty your pockets before going on some rides. They provide free lockers with fingerprint access and force you to go through metal detectors before getting in line for some rides. Guess that's why. I worked at a water park when I was in high school. Not the sort of amusement park most people think of but still an amusement park. The park had lots of large pools with a shallow section and a deep section, separated by rope. For some reason parents thought that their kids splashing around in the shallow end qualified them to swim in the deep end. When you're a lifeguard you're supposed to scan the pool every 30 seconds to check on everyone. 30 seconds is a long freaking time. On more than one occasion a kid would wander over into the deep end. They would be okay for a few seconds but would panic and start drowning. Unlike what you see in the movie as someone drowning is a fast silent affair. Splashing is the exception not the rule. Usually it didn't take too long to spot someone drowning. The problem was that when a guard blew the whistle and jumped in the water people would start flailing like chickens with their heads cut off. Unless the pool was nearly empty this significantly slowed things down. And then there's the people that tried to help. Unless your qualified guard stay out of the way. On more than one occasion kids got pulled from the water pretty dang near death. Giving a kid CPR is not a pretty sight. One kid did die during the time I worked there. 
thankfully it was on a day off. It doesn't help that some kids are totally fine to be swimming in pretty much any depth swimming pool while others are totally helpless. I don't remember not being able to swim, but my lady only learned when she was like 11 or 12. Not really a horror story but it was scary to me. I worked at a children's amusement park and they had me operating the ferris wheel which is a rough ride to operate. You have to balance it and put people on of similar weight on opposite cars so it's a lot of stopping and loading before letting it go around a few times. As you can imagine it's difficult for a teenager to explain to an overweight couple why they can't get on the ride when the only other person on the ride is a skinny kid. I was supposed to only be on the ride for 2 hours. They left me there for 4 hours in direct sunlight with no brakes. After 4 hours on a busy day with no water and no break and getting sick of having fat people yell at me for not being able to get on immediately, I lost track of whether it was balanced. I wound up making it go backwards and people freaked the frick out. That's happened before but I was usually able to stop it before it went all the way around. Not this time. I physically didn't have the strength. Luckily the owner was around and stopped it. People were pee. When my supervisor came to see what happened I said that's what happens when you leave someone on this ride for 4 hours. No idea how I didn't get fired. No one was hurt but they sure as frick were terrified. I worked for one summer at a Nazca speed park and it was probably the craziest summer of my life. So many injuries but nothing ever happening. When working the go-kart tracks if there was a wreck you were expected to run across the tracks dodging cars and unlodge the stuck car all before more cars zoomed past. The worst day though was on the 4th of July watching a man have a heart attack because I was the first person to get to the car when it stopped and had to wait with him until an ambulance showed up. Finally, one I can answer. I was working in an amusement park as a 19 year old and was on the turnstile talking with guests and checking everyone off. About 3 in the afternoon, a very young girl, about 6 or so, came up with her father, both in swimwear. Not unusual, since there's a water park attached to the regular park. However, there is a rule in the park that you have to be wearing a shirt to ride the ride, and the girl was in a two-piece suit. I informed the both of them that the girl needed a shirt, and we would be happy to save their spot in line if she had a shirt she could run and grab. Her father raised his voice and loudly asked why I was looking at his little girl and shouted about me being a peophile. I backed off and told him he misunderstood, but he kept shouting back to the line behind him about how I was a sicko, and only stopped when park security arrived a few minutes later. One of two times I felt like I was actually in danger. The dude was furious. People like this are awful. He fricked up, knew it, and was literally willing to start a fight to hide it. I used to be an operations led on the Jurassic Park ride at Universal Studios Hollywood. One day, I'm working the dispatch board, JP3, sitting in the operations booth when a phone rings. The lead manning the cameras answers, then suddenly slams the emergency stop button, shutting the entire ride down. We'd stopped for a moment so we could offload a disabled guest, and some brain surgeon was annoyed at the delay. So he lifted his kid out of the boat and sent him to call the booth from the emergency phone right next to the jeep drop effect. Which back then was still functional. If we hadn't been shut down, the kid very well could have been killed. We evacuated the ride, and stayed down for 5 hours because we couldn't get the water pumps back up and running. Dad and family were escorted from the parks on refund, though they pitched a fit. Another time. We had a couple of kids running around assaulting the costumed characters and then taking off. We had rough descriptions, and I just happened to be at the front entrance while a character was walking around. I saw one of them making a running approach on the mascot, and threw a nasty block into him as he tried to pass me. He went down hard, and stayed down when another escort dropped on top of him. He and his buddy were arrested, and I got a nice bonus for stopping them. Imagine being in such a rush that you end up delaying yourself for another 5 hours. This doesn't necessarily have to do with working in an amusement park, but it did happen in one. I worked in food, and sometimes had to cover stations that weren't my home station. The one time I got put into a dip in dot truck, everything was fine for a while, but nobody was checking in on me. I had to pee so bad, but I was really busy and I couldn't close down to go to the bathroom. Well it got so bad that I ended up peeing myself. Of course 30 seconds later, someone from security came in and asked how I was doing. I pretty much said that I peed and bolted. 
Told my manager I was sick and clocked out and left. I was mortified. It gets worse. Like 3 years later. I was on my senior trip for high school and a bunch of us were sitting around talking about jobs we'd had. This one guy, that was pretty mean, started talking about how he had to clean up pee in a dip in dots truck cause some butt hat peed himself. He said it was in the summer after 9th grade and he was pretty sure it was by the little kids section which was where I was. I had never felt like I had such a weighted secret in my life before. Now I think it's funny but I still have never told anyone that happened. LOL. Weird, this is almost exactly what happened to me, year before 9th grade but a dip in dots truck right near the kiddie area at the sweetest place on earth. I was so busy that day I didn't have time to run to the bathroom, my manager came and I told him what happened and he cleaned it up while I ran to change. I've told only one person about it but it is embarrassing, glad to know I'm not alone. Worked at a large amusement park in the Tampa Bay area, two stories come to mind. The coaster I worked on had no floors and someone's change from the front row fell out of their pocket and hit the person in the back row near their eye. Coaster came back with a lady bawling and blood all over her face. The second was someone threw up all over our elevator in 100 degree heat, with no AC. I drew the short straw on cleaning that up. I worked retail with a guy who'd worked summers at an amusement park in the Midwest. He'd been the ride operator for a fairly small, tame roller coaster. The previous summer, a high school kid had gone on it with some friends, and been unconscious when the ride stopped. My co-worker called for the medics and performed CPR until they got there. The kid was DOA at the hospital. My co-worker said he still beat himself up about it sometimes. I told him not to. The incident had made the paper in my hometown because the kid who died was getting ready to go to my former high school. And it was well known that most of his siblings had died young. He was something like the 5th of 6 or 4th of 5 to die before the age of 25. From a congenital heart defect, the last sibling didn't have it. But that warning on roller coasters about don't ride if you have a heart condition? Yeah, they mean it. The kid died, and the guy I worked with had to live with the aftermath of it. The family tried to sue him in the park. It didn't go anywhere once he told the lawyers the kid knew he had a heart defect and shouldn't have been on the ride in the first place. Man like it's obvious that family was going to lose that lawsuit, but honestly I can't even imagine how they would feel, like they just lost their child why he was trying to enjoy himself, I wouldn't even know how to react. I'm not an employee but was a resident of the area at the time, at Bush Gardens, VA, a few birds got in the way of a moving coaster train during its grand opening and hit the supermodel Fabio in the face. The news was there to cover the inaugural celebrity ride, but all they'd show for a while was the train returning to the station and Fabio with a face full of blood. Apollo's chariot. Great ride. Amazing first drop. Go on it every time I'm at the park. Not quite an amusement park but go-karts. Worked at an indoor go-kart place for years. One big safety rule is not to bump the carts. The track is wide enough for one cart to pass another, but the fact is they're not bumper carts and people get hurt all the time by bumping each other. Worst example I can remember, a dad and his kid started bumping mid-rack track guys stopped the carts to give them their first warning, brought them back up to speed, they tried it again and had a bad crash. Head on collision, one cart on top of the other, not only did it damage both carts, but it dang near sliced the kid's foot off. An ambulance was called, and he got 13 stitches. We had to paint the concrete track to cover the blood stain. Always follow the rules, kiddos. Why is it that the parents always seem to be freaking retards when it comes to safety of them and their children? I used to drive the monorails at Disney World. We could take up to 4 people with us in the front of the monorail all they had to do was ask for the nose. One time I was at Epcot Center and this family of 3 got on board. They all seem to be in a good mood and as we're traveling the son said daddy I don't feel so good. And the father said to him what did you eat too much junk food. Just then I noticed the kid began to hurl the father just shoved a t-shirt in the kid's mouth and it was spraying out the sides like a busted water pipe. All over the floor was brown water and chunks of hot dogs. 
the smell was killing all three of us. When we pulled into the station at the transportation and ticket center there were a few good looking girls waiting to get in the nose. But me being the lucky guy that I am when the doors opened and they could smell it everybody on platform just ran away from the train the family was so apologetic but it took a while to get that smell out of the train. Not me but my guy friend worked a summer at the amusement park portion of the water park. It was a water amusement park combo. He was assigned to a log flume ride where, at the top of the ride, it takes your picture and when you're done you can purchase it. He was supposed to man the picture purchase stand. At one point this family went on. The guy at the top took their picture and then the wife came up to my friend screaming that it was a horrible picture and that she demanded he retake it. He had to explain that he didn't take pictures. He just ran the stand where people can purchase them. All the while, her husband, two daughters and son just watched and dumbstruck and or as she claimed he was trying to get her to buy the picture. Eventually another employee at the park noticed and defended my friend and ushered the wife away, warning her that if she did that again she would be escorted out of the park. Her husband apologized for the incident, and my friend simply smiled and told him it wasn't a problem. He also ended up giving the picture to the husband for free when he asked for it. I managed to ask him if he was working there again this summer, and he said, Number, I don't think I could handle it, I'll work at the grocery store or something. I like how he's just like Lameo do take this crap and rub it in her face. During one summer in high school I got a job at an amusement park water park. I was trained on the kiddie rides and worked them for about 2 weeks before they moved me to the adult rides. The problem was, they didn't train me on any of the rides. But most of the time all you needed to know is which button starts the ride. One day I'm working these swings, the ones that go around and up pretty high. I start the ride when a sudden thunderstorm hits, lighting all around, and I've got like 20 or 30 people locked into a lightning rod screaming. I had no idea how to stop the ride. As luck would have it, my supervisor from the kiddie rides happened to be on the ride at the time. As she would come around, she'd try to yell directions to me. Mind you, the ride is only like 3 or 4 minutes, but that feels like an eternity when you're in a scary situation. So finally I figure out which button she's telling me to push. I push it and the ride stops. Yay. But, it's now stopped at its highest point, and it's not coming down. I just started pushing buttons like crazy until finally it started to move down. As people got off the ride they were crying, hugging, and giving me horrible looks. As soon as they were all off, I got down from the big metal podium I was on just as my actual supervisor arrives and tells me I'm not allowed to get down from my post until someone else comes around and tells me I can. My supervisor was pee at me for daring to get out of the thunderstorm without permission. I don't remember what I said next, I just remember walking out through security telling them I quit. I was shaking, so upset, I was responsible for those people on the ride and they could have been seriously hurt. You did well. And you did what was safe. Your supervisor is a dong for saying your safety and that of others isn't worth safeguarding without getting permission. I worked as an attraction CM for a Disney park. And my main ride had a height requirement. It wasn't a bad one either. If you were about 4-6 years old, you met the height. It wasn't a roller coaster so there was no fear of the kid flying out of their seat. But because of the nature of the ride they physically had to sit upright in their seats without assistance and no lap sitting. The amount of times I've seen people try to sneak their infants on the ride is astounding. It got to the point where I stopped trying to be nice and would straight up tell people that their babies would be seriously injured. I would have parents jokingly smack their infants head into the height bar and tell me how they're tall enough now. Like, the ride wasn't dangerous enough to cause shaken baby death or anything like that. But it also wasn't a freaking Fantasyland ride. I'm gonna guess Goofy's Barnstormer. I worked at Block Party which was an adult amusement place created by Blockbuster and only had two locations. Think Dave and Busters but with an adult size McDonald's style playground, motion simulator and stuff. Unlike most others it, this is not a story of death or dismemberment. It is the stuff nightmares are made of though. The scene is the power grid. The aforementioned playground in the dark with a techno soundtrack pumping in the background. You get to climb up inclines, 
Explore different themed rooms like a color changing room and a mirror room to crawl through. There are slides to take you out of the thing or into the ball pit. Oh heck yeah, there's a ball pit. Really cool thing except when the unthinkable happens. There are a couple of cast members working in there. Usually one at the front and one roaming. If I recall correctly I was floating. Basically covering breaks and yes. I was covering the power grid as the time of the event. I was covering the entrance and was going to roam after the co-worker I was covering got back. So there I am. Helping guests get their card in the turnstiles right. Because following the arrows is hard. And telling them the rules. After that. It is watching them take off their shoes and lock them up. Now that the scene is set. Onto the. Event. I got a complaint about a really bad smell in there and had the roam try to find it. There was only one way to do that crawl through it yourself. She did find it in the mirror room and reported it to the manager. The manger went to find out what was up. The manager could not tell what the source was since it was so dark. I went to the control panel and turned on the overhead halogen so she could have better look. I'm told she became real religious as the light hit the mirrors up there and screened out Jesus, Mary, and Joseph I cannot confirm this as her prayer could not be heard over the thumping of the bass line being blasted through the speakers. It turns out someone had smeared crap on the mirrors and floor of the room, little human crap, and people had been crawling in it, getting it on their clothes, and spreading it throughout the apparatus. We had to close the attraction down for the crap to be cleaned up. People are gross. No that sounds like such a cool concept too. In 1988, I was working park facilities at the now sadly defunct Jogger Lake Amusement Park near Cleveland. Park facilities is a nice euphemism for janitor. We emptied the trash cans, swept the midway, and cleaned the restrooms. The latter was my least favorite duty. I'm a minor clean freak, so cleaning dirty toilets makes me uncomfortable in best situations. And this was far from the best. At least once a day, some kid who was barely potty trained would clog the toilet by using what seemed like a full roll of toilet paper. You had to plunge the bowl, then go in with your hands and pull the soggy, soil tissue out in clumps. And of course, there were the various accidents, where number 1 or number 2 didn't make it where it was supposed to go. It was already pretty disgusting normally, is what I'm saying. So one day, I'm on toilet duty. When someone gives me a heads up that some kid had an accident. Oh great. Well. Better suck it up and get it over with. I head into the restroom and open the stall. Inside was a fecal horror show. There was poop. Everywhere. No. Literally everywhere. There was poop on the floor. There was poop smeared on the walls. There was poop on the toilet paper holder. There was poop on the back of the toilet. And of course the toilet was clogged solid with toilet paper and... Yes, more poop. Whatever had happened they had been a literal shit chow. Young me was more than a little shaken by the sight. And the smell. But I shoved my stress to the back of my mind and spent the worst 30 minutes of my life up to that point getting that stall clean. Finally, I found the employee who had alerted me to the problem. And told him it was all clear. Did you clean the other one he asked. I laughed at the weak joke. Like something like that could possibly happen twice at the same time. He wasn't smiling. Okay. Fine. I thought. I'll go look. I mean. Clearly he's joking. Right? Ha. Ha. The kid is obviously freaked out by having to clean so much crap. Let's tell him there's more. It wasn't a joke. A stall or two down. The identical twin of what I just cleaned was sitting there mocking me. For the only time in my life. I had a nervous breakdown. I hid in the nearest closet and just cried for 5 minutes. Once I'd finally pulled myself together, I went back in and cleaned the second stall. And yes, I was paranoid that there might be a third. To this day, I don't know how that was possible. A pair of identical twins with ibs and synchronized colons? Did some kid have so much poop in him that he did both stalls? <laughs> Typical not a worker but... When I was much younger I was walking out of Disneyland pretty late one night. They were having a lot of problems with the rocket rods ride at the time and I guess were testing it at night. As we walked under a part of the track something large flew off and smacked down hard. My dad made sure to find a few cast members and tell them. And the ride was permanently closed not long after. Year or so later I was bemoaning the fact that it was permanently closed and I never got to get on it when a mother and daughter walked up and said I was lucky I hadn't been on it, the last time they had ridden it it had broken down. 
and while they were waiting the seatbelt suddenly started tightening. They ended up having to be cut out of the car. Of all the issues I've heard read about the ride, the seatbelt one has never come up, though others have mentioned things coming off it before. I loved the rocket rods as a kid, but they were a mechanical nightmare and Disney is very lucky that they didn't kill anybody. I was at a firm in Williamsburg and we represented the fan family. Timothy Fan was killed in 1999 after dropping out of the shockwave ride at King's Dominion. He was really small for a 20 year old but hit the pavement like a 500 pound man. The photographs of his body were unbelievable. The family lost because King's Dominion, somehow, found witnesses who stated Fan was intentionally loosening his restraints to be able to raise his hands on the coaster. I don't know if anyone is familiar but the shockwave is a standing coaster. For someone to want to lift their hands is absurd, and that there were actually witnesses who saw him do it is preposterous. Working a high school night at a midwestern amusement park, some dude decides to climb the large structure in the middle of the park. It resembles a tower in France. He is beyond all protected barriers and watches an elevator go up, and continues to climb. Since he at this point is already a genius, he forgets about the 6,000 pound counterweight that is careening down at him at 40 miles per hour. Dude is cut in half, and one half is pink jello. Yes, all heck breaks loose. Body covered in sheets that are billowing in the wind since they are 150 feet above ground. Then, of course operations continued normally. Working monorails at Disney Orlando Contemporary Hotel Station. A kid, 11 or so, gets off the train with his family has an asthma attack, it goes from bad to horrifying as the parents have no inhaler or magic medical fix, we contact park emr immediately but it seems to take them forever to get up to the platform in the hotel, kid struggles breathing, gets worse, starts turning an alarming purple shade, sprays crap all over his shorts, and stays conscious and terrified looking the whole time as the parents and my co-workers look on helplessly, emr gets there, Within 3 minutes they sort him out good as new, son crappy shorts. Asthma is scary. I've had asthmatic bronchitis before where I needed a dilator inhaler, but I never struggled to breath more than a few seconds. Poor kid, it was awful. I have a different take on the question. I might have mentioned the story before, but oh well. I worked at the Forbidden Journey ride in its second year. We had worked out a lot of the kinks of getting the lines to work at their best, and we were getting close to having a perfect hour. This meant the ride not stopping and getting a body into every seat. The park had to be busy, the line sorters had to be on their game with single riders, height checks, and larger guests. It was a lot of parts that had to work perfectly to even be a possibility. Well, we were 50 minutes into the hour and got told that we were very, very close to achieving it. It's one of those things that everyone gets really really excited for when you are in the moment. 2 minutes pass, 4 minutes, still good, at 57 minutes, I remember it vividly. Our boss 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 comes to me, I am at the start of the ride platform, and tells me to be ready to send a VIP. He knew what was happening with our perfect hour so I knew it was a B.I.I. deal for him to be risking it to get a VIP through the line, especially when we had a secondary platform to send them from. At 59 minutes, he gives me the signal to hold the line and tells me that Paris Jackson and her brother are getting on. The problem is, they said they were ready and they weren't. It took them over half of that last minute to get from the special door to the ride while we held guests back out of their view and we had 68 empty seats while they tried to get their crap together. Not only did we not achieve our perfect hour, that was our worst count of the day. Hey, I also worked at Journey in its second year before transferring to Dragons and finally Hippo. I'm sitting there operating the roller coaster and this drunk lady in line shakes a turd out her pants all nonchalantly before getting in the ride. She looked right at me while doing it and I kind of acted like I didn't see it but was too horrified to look away at the same time. When the ride started I remember her yelling let's jit it and I heard that phrase over and over in a nightmare that night. Let's jit it. I have to. There was a resident idiot that helped with maintenance before the park opened for the day. One of his jobs was piling the roller coaster track. This involved riding the coaster with a soil can thing and squirting oil on the track as it went around. For one part you needed to be in the front car. For another you had to be in the back seat. 
So normal process was to ride it once in the front car, then switch to the back car and ride it again. Instead this dumbass decides to jump from the front car to the back car while he was at the top level of the ride. He missed, fell three stories, and landed flat on his back. Unfortunately he landed on three concrete stakes that were used as part of the tie down structure. They pierced him in three different locations, as in had to be cut off, him pulled off of them, before they could take him to the hospital. Miraculously none of them went through any of his internal organs and none hit a major vein or artery. He ended up fully recovering. The amusement park was the place which did the fireworks show every year for the 4th of July. It was in a big public park with a lake, and the fireworks were set off by some of the employees from an island in the middle of the lake. During the show, one of the guys accidentally kicked over a rack of launch tubes right as one of the mortars was firing. It lobbed right into the crowd and exploded in the middle of the crowd. There were several injuries and one little girl lost her hearing permanently. I was in the crowd on the other side of the lake and saw it hit. Really messed with the guy's head who kicked the rack over. He was the owner's grandson. Between that and several other things that happened that year. Including the owner trying to cut the locks off the gates to the public park to open them. He forgot that he agreed to close the park for the weekend so that a scene from Born on the 4th of July could be shot in an amphitheater right across from the park. The park crap down for good at the end of that season was pretty sad. I would freaking hate to be that guy who made a little girl deaf permanently. I hope both her and that guy aren't too bad off. I worked at an amusement park where one of our goals was to guest relate as much as possible. One day a kid told me hello after looking at my name tag. The name wasn't correct except for the first letter. I was having pretty rough day and I replied half heartedly, without even really thinking. Can you read, man? His mother then told me the kid was blind in one eye. I meant to apologize, but instead asked her. Oh, he is? It was a girl. <laughs> Worked security at a Six Flags. The thing that sticks out the most to me was around 13 years ago. On a 4th of July, I went with a group of other security officers to help out at Hurricane Harbor since they had more guests than usual show up. Come to find out the increased attendance was because of a radio station that was banned from Six Flags. Announced that rapper Mike Jones and his crew were going to be at Hurricane Harbor that day and the station was awarding tickets they didn't have to listeners. So what ends up happening is that a bunch of different street gangs decide to show up so they could hang out with Mike Jones. So the place to hang out is the wave pool. Every 45 minutes there is a 15 minute safety break where everyone has to leave the wave pool. When this happens most people just get in the lazy river that flows around the wave pool. Well during one of these safety breaks all of a sudden I start hearing people simultaneously yelling. I I I and then see all kinds of people running. Next thing I know there is a gang fight in the lazy river. Well one of the first things we are taught is to never get in the middle of a group fight because they will stop fighting each other and start fighting you. Well a Hurricane Harbor security officer decides to ignore all that and jumps in and gets his butt kicked. I think he actually got yelled at more for getting his radio wet than for getting beaten up. There were a few more fights after that so then the park called the police to send more officers to help. We ended up having the local SWAT team out there helping out. Every safety break after that had us in high alert for people fighting. People were floating in the lazy river during the safety breaks just looking at us and bragging about all the trouble that was going on and the fact that the SWAT team was there because they were so crunk. I remember going home that night just being mad at people in general and wondering how they get off on acting a fool. Every year after that. There was always a group of Six Flags security officers that were sent to Hurricane Harbor specifically to help out with the wave pool and lazy river on the 4th of July. No matter how many people were in attendance that day, I have not been to any amusement park since I quit because of stuff like that and do not plan on going anytime soon. I used to work at the Jurassic Park River Adventure Ride at Universal Orlando. I have seen a few and heard of a few stories. One I have seen was someone got out of the boat right after the ultrasaur part and just walked off the boat and stood there at the platform with the look of now what? Our guys on camera didn't notice him because he got off at a part where the camera can't see you too well. It turns out the guy was having a panic attack and decided that's what he needed to do. Guy watching cameras was either fired or transferred. Which was too bad because he was really cool. One story I have heard of was during grad bash where people from university take over the park for a night. 
We had a girl fall out of the boat by the Ultrasol Lagoon and nobody said anything and we didn't see it on our end. Ride was crap down looking for this girl and no one found out where she was until at the end of the night where she turned up for the bus to ride home. But turns out she was found walking around backstage, soaking wet and was escorted back into the park. No one had told us until after the event was over. Some minor ones are the amount of people who won't take their hats off on the ride and I being where the T. Rex attacks you. I have to stop the boat from going down the hill until hats came off. Also if you go on YouTube you can a video where someone jumped into the part of the ride to go retrieve their hat right where the boats land. Safe to say they were banned from returning to the park ever again. That Comcast gem gives me a new level of respect for that ride. Not the amusement park employee. But I was one of the kids that smashed her head open at a water park as a kid. When I was small. 8. I think. Back in the early 80s. We used to spend a good portion of our summers down at Ocean City. MD. Which had some good water slides. One of these was attached to the Jolly Roger amusement park. Back then. No one really believed in anything like guardrails. Or rules. Or non-skid stuff on the pool stairs. So you know. We're all sliding, then you splash into a fairly small pool, climb out, start over, only you have to climb out up these mossy, algae covered, slimy steps as people 2 and 3 times your size are hurtling down the slides, into the pool. Every time this happens, huge waves of water overtake you, hard enough as is, right? As I'm attempting to climb out, my pint sized self gets barreled over by some huge dudes ladies, who knows on a big. Gross, slimy foam mat, right into the cement pool edge, gashing my head open, blood everywhere. Do you know how much a head wound bleeds? A lot. Even more so in pool water, apparently. All I remember is the blood in my hair. I have a lot of hair, and it all being matted together and freaking out because oh heck no not more stitches. I had to go get my head sewn up, and we got free park passes for the summer. I rode a lot of stupid rides that summer. And have a scar on my head to show for it. The 80s were a fascinating time. I work a roller coaster that has since been remodeled in a resort in California. I had a train pull into the station. A guest sitting in the middle of the train was passed out, and his friends were freaking out. I told them to leave their friend in the train. We got the ride crap down, and the guest started having a grand mal seizure. Bit his tongue, blood spraying everywhere. His buddies told me to do something. Get him off the train. They were panicking. I told them to leave him be till the seizure passes. It's better he hits his head on the fiberglass than the concrete. And don't hold him. It can injure the person having the seizure as well as the person trying to restrain him. Every once in a while. When a guest tries to be funny and pretend to be passed out as a train pulls into the station. I switch into emergency mode. Getting ready to spring into action for another seizure. I was the team leader. Shift manager pretty much, for one of those raft water rides that sits 12 people on a giant inner tube. A child that was maybe 12 or 13 years old had a seizure while going down the final drop, because he wasn't going to be able to get out of the vehicle we pressed the emergency stop which drained all of the water and we removed everyone on the ride. As I was waiting for the EMTs to come and help with a child I got a call on my radio to report to the top of the lift right away for another emergency. I run full speed through the ride and up the 5 stories worth of stairs to get the top. The vehicle at the top had gone over the crest but from some reason did not drop into the water so the boat was literally teetering on the lift. If it had fallen it would have been about a 10 foot drop on solid concrete. I had to lead my team in evacuating the entire section of the park while LEMT's treating the kid with the seizure and now the fire department coming to help get these people off the ride safely while rocking the strongest poker face I've had to keep. Ever. The conversation with the people on the boat on the lift went something like this. Is everything okay? We're just having some technical difficulties. We unfortunately need to remove everyone from the ride. Just please remain seated and we'll get you out in no time. Why can't we get off now? Your boat stopped in a weird spot so we just need to wait for someone to come tie the boat off. Are we in danger? No not all. But for all that is holy don't bounce around too much. And please ignore the news helicopter in the sky. Worked at an old western movie studio turned theme park. At one time, Gary Busey was filming a movie there and that's a nightmare in itself. 
He ended up stealing someone's car and doing donuts in the middle of the desert for an hour. Not me but my sister worked at Walt Disney World and she told me that one guy stuck his whole hand in the water, even though they tell you keep your arms inside the vehicle, and it got stuck in one of the mechanisms and pulled his finger out and they had to go fish for it. I worked at a popular southeastern theme park. Everything is actually on the up and up there except I accidentally broke a co-worker's ankle. It was super busy and I was running the gates. She kept bitching to hurry and close them as soon as guests were clear. Well guest clear but she didn't. Closed them and broke the old lady's brittle ankle. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video.